Hello, everybody. I'm SJM. Welcome to Storybook Brawl. So I've decided that I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a different video because most of the videos we see out there is either, you know, just game straight gameplay, people from, you know, commenting on their on their play and their games um, and just uh, that kind of thing there. Um, or tier lists um, and just introductory type of videos and I wanted to do something a little bit different here. So uh, what I've decided to do is analyze one of my games where I may have an asterisk on the may have made a relatively um, medium sized blunder. It wasn't a huge blunder or anything like that and um, not judging by the results of the game for sure but um, just going to back that one up for a second. But yeah, not looking at the results overall, but, uh, you know, just something that it could have taken the game in a totally different direction. And, you know, who knows where it would have led after that. But, um, you know, it's hard to argue with with uh, the final results. But uh, first round there, I took the Polywoggle with Evella. It's an animal and it will boost up some of your evil things at the end there. And then I come across this shop, which is just the god shop for round two. Uh, a shrink spell, which reduces the cost of your characters by one. And then the chicken. So you have two for the shrink spell and then one to buy the chicken. And that allows you to buy the other two units in there, which happen to be evil. And one happened to be the um, the cat, which is the black cat, which is the best, absolute best early game unit for Avella. So um, we're just sticking to this polywoggle plan, just trying to make that work here in the early game. Because um, that's one of the biggest things that can get you ahead uh, early, um, but there is some strategy to using Polywoggle, which I will go over here in a minute or two. Uh, just go through these battles here. These are not uh, too exciting. End up winning mostly because of Avella's power, buffing up uh, the evil creature, the Minotaur in the back, so it's able to survive uh, attacks and then have a huge bit of health here as well. So when we're on uh, like a one tick away from leveling up, you really don't want your polywoggles to get their sleighs and to fire themselves off. And uh, just going to back that up for a second here as well, uh, because um, it's especially going from two to three, like if you're not hitting that polywoggle at the very first turn of two, like you're getting a three drop early isn't that exciting. Uh, but getting a four drop when you're in round three is a little bit better, obviously. And then the higher you go, the more effect that it has. Um, this shop here, uh, we're definitely picking up the um, the second polywoggle. And then there's a choice here. There's the baby root and then there's the Sherwood Sure Shot. So I was thinking about the Sure Shot because it gives you, you know, you got a 50-50 chance. You put the Sure Shot in your first slot, you get a 50-50 chance of winning the die roll and she can deal f up to four damage, you know, two ranged and then two when something attacks into her. On the other hand, having that um, baby root there is going to give us uh, plus three, plus three stats on two of our creatures. So, and then with the cat there, we get two, technically two creatures out of that. So that's giving us 12 points of defensive stats. It's not the best, but um, especially on a Minotaur, it becomes really good, right? Because then you've got a, a, big, a bigger butt on your Minotaur. Uh, so I decided in the end to go with the baby root. Um, and then, you know, you get plus three on your cat twice. So that's six plus three on your... Labyrinth Minotaur, and then the three health on the Baby Root itself, which can make a difference in some situations. Didn't in this battle, but that's because Beauty had a couple of Minotaurs. Not much we can do in that point. Uh, this shop here is pretty straightforward. There's three Spell Weavers. We're definitely picking up this triple. This is not the absolute best by any means with the um, Evella, but... Uh, it's definitely very serviceable, especially with these animals on the front line that'll be dying and buffing them up before they get a chance to take their turn at attacking. 
Uh, now that we're at level three, we definitely want our polywoggles up front, although the chance that they're going to get a slay was pretty low. This, uh, But in this battle, it actually happened to be 50-50 for each of them because there was the uh, two tinies on the other side, but didn't work out for us. So we're still kind of hoping that the polywoggles will come home at some point there. Uh, picking up Sting is huge when we're on the polywoggle plan because that just gives us the power that it actually needs to get the sleigh off. Uh, the only thing that's bad about that is if we don't win the die roll and they attack our one slot minion. So it might have been technically better to have um, either the Minotaur or the Spellweaver up on the front line to kind of protect it a little bit more. Uh, but nothing we can do about that happening that way. They get two slaves with their kitty cut purses, so they're rolling in the dough, especially... Well, we did actually kill off the pig, so they don't get that extra money. Uh, so we're just cruising along here a little bit, not doing too much special, and we come across the Golden Polywoggle, which is excellent, just excellent, especially when next round we're going to be going into four, so we'll be getting an upgraded five-cost unit uh, next round, provided this Polywoggle does not get a sleigh. Um, we don't want it to have it a sleigh, so I slot it on the back line, and then I thought, uh, maybe it's better on the bench, and then I thought, well, maybe for winning the battle's sake, it should be on the field, so I'll just slot it up on the front line where maybe it can soak up an attack. Uh, this does eventually come back to bite me in the butt because he gets the sleigh. <laughs> Uh, I get the win on the battle, maybe even because we had the polywoggle out there. Uh, and then we hit a court wizard. So we are a long ways off from doing anything with a court wizard. And also my bias for playing animals with Avelas was pretty strong, although I'm kind of kind of getting better at getting out of that now. And this is one of these games where I do think think it probably would have been right to get out of Avella, especially when we're sitting here looking at the Juliet in this shop here. However, I just, and I also have that bias where I don't like royals at all, so these are a couple of things that I need to work on on a personal level, is that going with even like Royals is a perfectly fine mid-game comp. It's pretty garbage when we get towards the end of the game, but here on level four, even um, starting to move into Royals for the next level or two isn't that bad. Like next next three to five fights or so, being in Royals isn't bad at all, especially when you're starting with an upgraded Court Wizard. But that being said, uh, we st stay away from that plan and I'll be kind of veering away from what I do on screen and talking and my chat here is telling me that I should be going to Royals. Uh, so we could have had a um, the the Juliet. Then I probably would have looked at picking up this Godmother at that point because Godmother is pretty decent when you got when you're in the Royals composition because almost everything's good. That just gives you like that extra big butts there when you're when you're on the back line. Although I don't really like it when we're on the court wizard plan because we really do want to maximize the number of princes and princesses that we have uh, to trigger the court wizards. That being said, if I had actually gotten this far, then we would have seen... Actually, it's the next rule. I think there's a uh, court wizard, or is it the next shop that there's a court wizard? No. No. It must be the next shop, so uh, that being, or the next, after this battle here. Uh, this person's um, got on pan. My camera's covering up the level there, so I think they've accelerated out pretty nicely, but we end up winning the battle, so not a big deal there at all. And I just rolled right past that shop because there was... Uh, something of note was the Lady of the Lake, but that's not so good. I probably wouldn't have taken that if I had gone into the Royals. So I uh, would have rolled past that. And then we would have seen the uh, Good Witch of the North here, which would be which would have been a pickup. 
And then the next shop here, we find the Romeo as well. So we would have had Romeo and Juliet. So we would have had two Juliets eventually, um, along with a godmother and the Good Witch of the East. And this composition would definitely be looking a lot different at that point. Um, who's to say how the fights would have gone when we don't have this huge buffed up evil uh, ranged unit in the back towards the end of the fights. Um, but um, like I said, we can't really imagine what would happen um, what would happen but we could just say like looking back in hindsight there that the royals composition definitely was was starting to come together at this point um, definitely not looking at any um, upgraded royals so the arthur that we're going to see here in a minute or two would not have been that uh good but we also would have in the next shop we're going to see a nutcracker uh, as well as a godmother and a brave princess so we would have had our um we would have had our choices of what kind of a good composition that we would have gone into so there's that nutcracker that i was talking about and then in the next shop here we would have seen that godmother probably would have stayed away from that but then we might have even gone with the um, adventurer although that's a little bit a late for an adventurer at this point with only the good witch that would have been able to buff it um, but here we um, in the active game let's we'll just switch gears back here to the active game so I found the um, kiss, uh, true love's kiss which I turned used to turn that um, upgraded four into an upgraded five which happened to be a monster book um, pretty lucky hit there. There are some upgraded fives that don't do anything for us in this position, but um, most of them aren't too bad, but some of them are going to be pretty mad at that point, like an upgraded Soltak Ancient or an upgraded Put Rotten Apple Tree. Not the greatest hits there when we get to five. Um, but there, then we find another True Love's Kiss right after it, and that's that's pretty premium actually. So um, and just opening up a slot in the shop there just so that something can spawn from level 5 because we're going to be going up to level 5 at the next so we have a shot at least a shot to see a 5 drop rather than just no shot. So I traded in my mouse, abandoned the mouse plan and uh, here we upgrade our monster book and this is why I said at the beginning of the video we can't look at the end results um, because what that's not like getting lucky like this at the end of the fight uh, or at, at the end result shouldn't determine what was right overall because I truly do think now that we see another Juliet in there we're going to see some more uh, Romeos we're going to see Arthur we're going to see Lance we're going to see good boys all in these shops here coming up through the uh, the rest of the fights and uh, definitely probably would have been um, a, not as good a game overall if we had gone the Royals route so we'd have the upgraded um, Juliet by now and then we would have rolled past this shop obviously um, or I think it's the next one after this that we're going to see Arthur and uh, Lancelot uh, but yeah we can talk a little bit about this fight here it's kind of got a little bit mixed up on where my positioning should have been because I kind of want, still wanted to have that um, Spellweaver in the last position to get maximum buffs on it. But with the buff, amount of buffs that we get from the animals and the upgraded Berenstain, um, definitely a lot better. So I get that right in this next round here. Uh, so we kind of correct that mistake. Um, grab the newly downgraded Turkish Delight. Still one experience gets us that little bit closer to seeing sixes in the next round, which we're looking for. And then, you know, we're passing by all these royals. Not all, not a lots and lots, but um, there was enough there that definitely the composition would have come together at the end of the day, right? Uh, so at this point in the actual game, I'm just looking for more baby bears because they just get so much buff from the um, Berenstain. 
Um, needed to get rid of that spell weaver because that's pretty weak uh, at the start of the mat of the start of the fight. Although the way this one went there, it kind of you know nobody attacked him too early. So 19 power isn't too bad at this stage in the game, but it's nothing spectacular by any means of the imagination, not compared to a baby bear or or the like, right? So here we're just rolling to find more Baron Stins or an Echo Wood, because Echo Wood will benefit from all of the buffs that the Baron Stin gives for the resummoned animals. And then here we just uh, bite the bullet. We're going to take that Grumble Gore because that adds a ton of power to our original attacks. Uh, we see the uh, Knighthood there, which isn't anything that we're freezing for at this stage because uh, it's there's nothing on my field that I want to spend 12 gold to upgrade because even upgrading the Baby Bear at that stage, like Berenstin's doing a lot more work than the upgrade is anyways. So getting an extra 4... Four plus four plus four on the mama bear and then a plus eight plus eight on the papa bear was not nothing really compared to what the Berenstain's doing anyways so the re the return on the investment there was was definitely nothing that we were looking at at that stage uh, so we just fought uh the peter pants there uh sitting at a pretty healthy 30 life and a very powerful board um and he had Let's just rewind that for two seconds. So he's got here, and I'll just pause it so we can go over it. This is the biggest, the best combo that you can possibly get. Uh, oh, it's very, very hard to hit with Peter Pants because we've got a six cost, or is it a five cost artifact uh, in the um, want the wand of weirding there uh, but he's got Merlin's ball or he's got Merlin's hat and the crystal ball there which allows you to just essentially chain spells together like crazy he's got wizard apprentice he's got um, other mages there so if he's got an Aeon sitting in his back line he's buffing all of those things uh, while he's casting pretty much just primarily spells for the whole thing and that's Pretty much the best thing that you can do with the Peter Pants. Um, yeah, maybe not likely that he had an Aeon on the on the bench, seeing as how it's really hard to get to an Aeon with Peter. But is what it is. So we're just continuing on here, looking for more Echo Woods, another Berenstain, baby bears. Um, you know, passing by like we could have possibly tried to transition into Treants, but um, without. I don't like doing that until you have the round table first. Uh, in this situation, if you're in Treants to start and then you go, go to the um, round table, then that's a different story. But if you're transitioning to Treants, you kind of want to have the round table first. Um, this person, Soaring Flying, picked the uh, Exploding Mittens. Uh, definitely not a wise one, but there were no dwarves player in this lobby, so he kind of, maybe that was calculated on his part, maybe not. Uh, maybe he just doesn't know how absolutely devastating having exploding mittens is when you've got three angries on the other side of the table, but um, that is what it is. And, you know, it'll beat a lot of compositions, especially animals with the relatively low threshold of the hit points. Um, but... That is what it is. So we're going up against Pan here next. Uh, nothing much to speak of. We still got that silly spell weaver out there uh, where I probably should have the um, the one wolf in sheep's clothing that I had back there. Um, so opponent gets lucky with their disintegrate and they hit my Berenstain, which almost caught or it did cost us this round uh, because he's got he had his Berenstain and the the uh, three big pigs going off which he got all buffed up there so our next round is up against this super pants which it truly is a super pants and I knew I had absolutely no chance uh, of winning this next battle 
just based on what I had already seen. So just, you know, roll hard. Maybe we can hit a pigmorph. Maybe we can hit um, the poison apple tree or the poison apple that might do something, but I doubt it that anything will happen even there. And then we get some really bad news when the uh, the boards come up here. So let's just slow that back down to normal speed. So he's got a 362, 356 upgraded um, Storm King in the back line there. He's got an upgraded Doom Breath. So he hit all of the True Love's Kisses that he needed to hit. He hit... Um, you know, he hit good on his True Love's Kisses, so there's not much you can do when somebody gets pretty lucky like that. But, you know, um, having the... Having that combo right of the ball and the hat. I can't see my things down there. The ball and the hat and... The Wand of Weirding, and yeah, so he's with those three there. Every True Love's Kiss you cast is upgrading your characters twice, so that's how he got to those sixes, but he, he did admittedly hit Lucky on them. Pretty sure he had no chance of losing that battle, even against the Mittens player. wasn't going to touch him very much. But yeah, anyway, that was a good um, thing. It's something I like to do is when I start losing some games all in a row, I like to review them and go back and take a look. See, was there something that I missed? Was it truly just, you know, unlucky battles, unlucky shops? Like, what was the reason why I didn't uh, do well for a number of matches in a row? Usually, it's I'm not looking like every, every time I don't finish in the top four, um, I go and review it. But even this one with a third, it was good to go back and look at what could have been if we had gone with the Court Wizard route, which probably was the correct choice in this one. Anyways, I appreciate you all for tuning in, um, and I hope you do see you all in the next one. Bye now.